Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at my 1984 GoBots Dive Dive. So stick around for more. Hey guys, I'm here from Transformers and Video Games and welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned in my intro, today we're going to be taking a look at my vintage GoBots Dive Dive, which was first released in Japan by Bandai back in 1983 as Machine Robo Series MR33 Submarine Robo. For anyone new to the channel, I'm an adult collector who's been on YouTube for about a year and a half now. I got back into collecting over 10 years ago, and I've been using my YouTube channel to share my passion for collecting retro video games, along with vintage Transformers and GoBots with other like-minded adult collectors. If you're not already subscribed and want to show your support, hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. I really enjoy interacting with my viewers. Also be sure to leave me a like. It really helps smaller channels like mine get traction on the platform. Now on with the review. Okay, so as always, when I have it available, I like to start out by taking a look at the packaging. This is obviously a sealed specimen of Dive Dive. I bought this from an online retailer called Transformerland about a year and a half ago. For anyone not familiar with Transformerland, they sell a variety of figures, but I generally use them to purchase vintage Transformers and GoBots. I've actually filled a number of holes in my collection over the years thanks to them, so check them out if you have any interest. One thing that I've always appreciated about carded vintage GoBots figures is the colorful packaging and the fact that the entire right-hand side is dedicated to displaying some very beautiful artwork of the figure in both modes. As you can see from the illustration of Dive Dive in robot mode, this is very true to the way the figure and the packaging actually looks, as opposed to the way the character looked in the 1980s Hanna-Barber television program. If I were a betting man, I'd say that that's likely because the figure predates the television show, which may not have been released until later on in 1984, after the packaging for the GoBots version of the figure was produced. Another reason I say that is because they refer to Dive Dive as a friendly robot submarine on the packaging, as opposed to referring to him as one of the Guardians, like they would have done in the fiction. As you could see from the upper right-hand corner of the packaging, this version of Dive Dive was produced by Tonka, and this particular specimen was sold at Target for $8.49. For any of my international viewers, we don't have Target here in Canada right now, and I'm pretty sure we didn't have it back in the 80s either. Couple that with the fact that the writing on the packaging is in English only and not multilingual, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that this is the American version of the figure. Now, the only reason I point that out is because here in Canada, I seem to remember GoBots being cheaper than $8.49. I thought they were maybe around the $5 mark. But anyways, leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know if you have any insight into the pricing of regular sized GoBots when they were first released back in the 80s. Now we'll move along to the back side of the packaging, which is understandably far less colorful and far less interesting compared to the front side. This packaging was designed to hang from pegs on retail shelves back in the day, so there's a hole punched in the top of the card back to accommodate that. Occasionally you see unpunched sealed GoBots for sale, and I often wonder if some of these are surplus figures that were never displayed or sold in a retail environment. If they were, I wonder how they would have been displayed. The upper half of the card shows the instructions on how to convert the figure into submarine mode. It's showing that it takes nine steps, which is certainly more involved than your average vintage G1 Transformers minibot transformation. The bottom half of the card is fairly uninteresting, showing a black and white illustration of the figure in both modes. There is a warning on the back of the packaging saying, Caution, do not force parts. Too much force is unnecessary and may cause breakage. Now this is something that every collector already knows, but truth be told, I was transforming my grey KO version of Dive Dive from submarine mode into robot mode in order to make this video, and ended up accidentally yanking the figure in half when I was attempting to pull the legs down. I managed to pop them back in place, but it was a frightening reminder of how old and fragile some of these figures can be after 35 years. Here we are with the figure at a package, and I think it looks great. One thing that I never understood was why some figures were displayed in their packaging with one arm straight up in the air like this. I seem to remember pointing out the same thing in my GoBots Loco review from a little while ago. Be sure to check it out when you have a chance. Dive Dive has some serious giant 80s shoulder pads going on here, but other than that, the proportions are pretty good. 
He has a nice chromed head which really pops in contrast to his predominantly navy blue body, and based on his giant feet, I'm sure he had no trouble getting a date on a Saturday night back in the day on Govatron. The back of the figure is about as clean as it gets. He does have the submarine bridge and periscope section as a bit of a backpack, but this can easily be forgiven considering the scale of the figure. His entire chest section is made out of painted die cast metal, which gives the figure a decent amount of heft for his size. Sadly, modern Transformers no longer have die cast metal parts, other than occasionally on the premium Masterpiece line. Overall, I think that Dive Dive has a solid robot mode. Now we'll take a look at the articulation of the figure. The arms will pivot up and down due to a hinge joint on the shoulder section. And the arms will also rotate a full 360 degrees due to a connecting ball joint. The head is stationary, but of course I'm not going to force it. The legs will rotate 90 degrees at the knees. And his feet will also fold down 90 degrees. The figure has a very respectable amount of articulation due to transformation. Here's Dive Dive standing next to the grey KO version that I mentioned nearly breaking a little bit earlier in the video. I think that these are great companion pieces to have in any GoBots collection, especially if you're a variant collector. I think I prefer the way the official GoBots version of Dive Dive looks in robot mode, but if I'm being honest, I think the grey version looks better in alt mode since to me it looks more like a real world submarine, but we'll take a closer look at the alt mode a little bit later. There is a difference in quality here. Like most vintage KO figures, the quality isn't bad, but the plastic feels a little bit more dense to me on the official figure. Also, if you look closely, you can see that the seam lines on the front of the robot legs are more prevalent on the KO version. As expected, the overall build quality is better on the official figure. A close-up of both figures side by side reveals even more differences. The die-cast body section has actually been completely remolded on the KO figure. If you look closely, the shape of the abdominal section on the KO version is completely different, and molded details on the upper left and right sides of his chest have been completely removed on the KO. Now anyone can tell the difference between an official dive dive and a KO version when you're comparing the blue and grey versions, but there's also a blue KO dive dive which I don't have, but that you need to watch out for. Either way, the easiest way to spot an official figure is to look at the manufacturer's stamps on the bottom of the figure's feet. The official figure says MR33 on one foot and it says Bandai Japan along with a date stamp on the other foot. The grey and blue KO versions of Dive Dive also have stamps in the same place, although in the case of the KO version, it will simply say Taiwan on each foot. Now I do apologize if that can't clearly be seen on camera for this specimen here. The molding detail is a little bit muddy on the KO version. Now let's get into the transformation. Start off by rotating the shoulder sections upward and having them meet above the figure's head to conceal it. Now unfortunately they don't peg together, which is a bit of a shame. Next, move the wheel section from the back of the figure to the front. Then rotate the leg section 90 degrees and fold the foot down 90 degrees as well. Then do the same thing on the other side. The leg sections will then peg together for a nice solid fit. Then collapse the legs to hide the figure's thighs. And that's it for the transformation. Here we are with the figure in alt mode, and I've got to say that it's a really nice submarine mode. Off the top of my head, I can't think of many submarine figures from the Transformers lines that we've seen over the years. I know there was a Scout class Minicon from a number of years ago named Deep Dive, and a repaint named Dive Plane, but other than that, I'm drawing a complete blank here. Dive Dive has three metal wheels on the underside that roll, along with some sticker details and a little bit of silver paint. There's a lot of nice molded details on the body of the submarine, along with a bit of sticker detail close to the back rudders. Overall, I think that this is an excellent alt mode, but I do find that it can be difficult for the front end to stay together at times, since it doesn't peg together, which is a bit of a shame. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Dive Dive next to the grey KO version. One difference that jumps out at me is that there are three round molded circles on the side of the grey version. From the top view they're virtually identical, but I did notice the shape of the back rudders are different. I prefer the shape of the rudders on the grey version, and like I mentioned earlier, I prefer that a submarine figure be grey rather than blue. Other than the molding differences on the die cast part that I pointed out earlier, one difference with the underside is that the official figure has metal wheels, and this particular KO has black plastic wheels. Okay guys, 
Here we are with Dive Dive back in robot mode, and I think I'm going to leave it at that for today. In conclusion, would I recommend adding a GoBots Dive Dive or a Machine Robo Series MR33 Submarine Robo to your collection? If you're a GoBots collector, then I would absolutely pick this one up for a good price. If you're not already a GoBots fan but collect vintage Transformers, then why not give this figure a try? It's still fairly inexpensive given its age, unless you're looking for a box specimen. It has two great modes, including a submarine mode, which we don't see very often, and it looks fantastic on display with other vintage figures. Anyways, thanks again for watching everyone. Take care.